All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, here I am, best-selling author Sylvester McNutt the third. Today's topic is your guide to getting closure now. So if you're watching this, I just want you to know I'm recording on multiple places. I have you guys right here. You're my Instagram uh, IGTV people. And then you guys over here, you're my YouTube people. When you record on Instagram, you got to record up and down. And when you record on YouTube, you have to record sideways. So I first published this blog, um, Your Guide to Getting Closure Now in Three Easy Steps. Um, it's actually going to go live tonight, today. Um, you'll probably see this video shortly after. So I really want to give you some words that will help you get closure. And I want to do this in five minutes or less. One of the keys towards cultivating genuine and deep connections is to heal from connections that you have uh, from connections that have caused you pain or if the pain is still lingering to heal from that. You know, one of the things that slows us down, slows down our mental bliss, so slows down our happiness is the unresolved pain that we haven't managed, that, that we haven't dealt with. So in order to get closure, in order, in order to heal, we do have to attack uh, this pain and we have to go into it knowing it's going it, to, it may be ugly and it may be a battle, but you have to do it. Um, so I have three points of emphasis that I think uh, will help you heal. Uh, now, these are not theories. I'm not giving you theories. I don't I don't talk about uh, theories per se. I like to talk about things that uh, I can speak to that I've done or witnessed or, or, or seen or been a part of myself. So the very first thing I want you to do if you're looking at healing is I want you to live in reality and not fantasies. Now, a person who's in pain may have is going to definitely have a different sort of reality versus the same person who is not in pain. Now, when you're in pain, though, you can often live in a fantasy and you project a fantasy of how things could be. You also could project a fantasy of, of a deeper, darker experience that you may not actually be experiencing. So I really want you uh, to just try your best to get back to reality. I have a, I have this quote that says closure happens right after you accept that letting go and moving on is more important than projecting a fantasy of how the relationship could have been. So for context, if you're not in a relationship, then just just regard the last part, you know, uh, projecting the fantasy of how the situation could have gone. Maybe maybe you're, you're moving on from, you know, a job loss or something of that nature. So the closure that you need, it starts once you. Boom, you got you like I got to make a decision. I'm accepting like I'm choosing to accept that letting go and moving on is more important than whatever else whatever other fantasy I'm trying to project about how things are going or 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 could have could have been. Um if you're going through a breakup, the worst mistake you can do is go ask the other person you're breaking up with for closure or to wait for them to give you closure. They don't owe you closure. Um, they don't owe you closure. They're hurting too. They have their own process. They're entitled to worry about their own process. You are your responsibility. It's your responsibility to heal. It is your responsibility to heal, not theirs. They don't think uh, they owe you something because they don't. If you want closure, you must accept reality and you have to break up with the fantasies that are polluting your soul. If you want closure, it's up to you to move on, not them. All right. Stop chasing them. Let them go. Just breathe. You got to take it day by day. Breathe. Focus on healing and reality. I promise you, if you if you tell yourself every day, I want to focus on reality, you'll be so, so happy. Um, the second step I have for you is to seek something new, not a person. You know, a lot of times dating coaches and I want to make it perfectly clear when I say this, I am not a dating coach. I have no aspirations to be a dating coach. Yes, I do talk about um gender dynamics and and, and uh, interpersonal relationships, but I am not a dating coach. My whole perspective is how do I help my reader or my listener 
to cultivate genuine connections that aren't just exclusive to dating, but can benefit benefit them in the personal world, in the business world, in dating. Um, even if it's just, hey, I'm sitting at the bar and there's a guy here. I like to give my readers information that will help them cultivate genuine connections, right? So I'm not a dating coach, but here's my write-up. If there's something you have to let go of, and let's just assume you were in an entanglement with someone, moving on to another person may not be a good idea. Some dating coaches say that getting a quick hookup will help you get over your ex. Some take the opposing opinion and say that hooking up will ruin your emotions. And um, I think they're both right. If a dating coach says, I think they're both right, depending on the person. It just depends on who you are. Um, honestly, it, depend it depends on the person. You know, and it depends how you feel about casual sex. It depends how you feel about rebound sex. Uh, and because there are so many asterisks in there and there's so many uh, variables, that's not going to be my advice to you. My advice to you is this. Move on to something new, like a new hobby, a new creative outlet, or even a new apartment. When I got out of my relationship in 2014, I moved out of my apartment. I attended a new gym. I started shopping at a new grocery store. I moved on to what felt like was a new life for me. Okay, does that make sense? You know, maybe you need to start painting again. Maybe you should take up CrossFit. Maybe you should do yoga. Maybe you should start volunteering at the dog shelter near you. Um, new activities and situations spark your brain and create new pathways for you to process information uh, in your brain. So one of the main reasons people never get closure is because they stay in the exact same situation. You know, the person has left, but they're in the same situation. They're in the same experience. They're in the same house. Like, they wear the same clothes. They drive the same car. So it almost feels like there's a void. Like, this one person leaves, and they take this void with them. So what I personally did was I just reinvented my whole life. <laughs> I just reinvented my whole life. And uh, like I said, I started shopping at a new grocery store, went to a new gym. And it was a beautiful thing because if I would have never met to, went to that new gym, some of my best friends that are my best friends now, I met at the new gym. So it, it, it's one of those things. It's like a blessing in disguise. You don't know until you actually jump and make that jump. All right. Now, the last thing I have for you is the timetable. Okay. Break up with the timetable and stay present. The key to your happiness rests in between each little moment. You have to stop racing to get to the future. You must break up with caring about the past. Of course, I have compassion for you and understand that you are hurting, but these words matter. You have to break up with the past. Attempting to stay mentally present in the moment is the path to true healing. If you think healing is going to happen like a light switch, then you have to change your target. You have the wrong target. In order for you to heal, you must take it day by day and you have to be patient with yourself. Um, so in summary, just remember, you know, healing is a timetable, but you don't know the timetable. I actually believe healing is a lifelong journey. If I'm being completely honest with you, I believe that from the moment that our consciousness becomes uh, to a point where we're aware like that we are uh, an I, like it's like, oh, I am a person. From that moment forward, I believe that healing is a lifelong journey. Now, someone could also argue, and I would I would agree with them if they made this argument. They would they could even say that you subconsciously do healing mechanisms, and your body attempts to heal before your mental consciousness even kicks in. That you are a you, you are an I, as I as I worded it. And if you were were willing to say that as an argument, as a a, a counter to what I just said, I would one hundred percent agree with you. So I believe we are healing from the time that we are conceived to the time that we perish. Uh, so there is no, in my opinion, timetable. I just think it's all about the strategy you take, you know, the, the way you approach it and um, the skills you use and how patient you are. Uh, I would say, if I'm being honest, uh, from that situation, it probably took me like three, four years to really uh, recover and uh, create a new me, learn a new me. And be uh, content and comfortable with the new me and happy with the new me um, after that, you know, that relationship I had to move on from and, and get closure from. Um, so, look, if you're if you're if you're a, a, fo a follower, a reader, if you're a fan and, you know, you follow my videos and my writings and you know me already, I just want to uh, thank you for viewing this content. 
I love creating content that can potentially help people. So thank you very much. Uh, if you're new to me, very simple. I'm a um, seven-time international best-selling author. I've written seven books. I've spoken in 50 cities. And um, my passion really is just trying to help people cultivate genuine connections, inspiring people to find their purpose, and, and pushing everyone towards healing. That's my purpose. Um, so uh, if you're new, hit follow. Let me know what you think about this video. And if you know someone who can uh, benefit from it, you know, let them know. Let them know I exist. Let them know about the quality work that I'm trying to do. And uh, always remember, it's not that deep. <laughs> All right, y'all, YouTube. I love y'all, man. Thanks for rocking with me for years. Um, I just finished the Instagram Live, but I'm going to give you another 10 seconds on YouTube. I started YouTube back in 2010 just sharing... As a, as a creative outlet, sharing poetry and just different thoughts. And um, I'm actually about to come up on 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. And that's actually like, that's actually like a pretty cool thing. I, I guess I'd never really thought about it. Um, but yeah, I promise to just keep bringing you guys good content. I promise to uh, go over whatever topics you need. And um, I'm going to stay within my purpose. And I hope my work can help you stay within your purpose. All right, YouTube. Hey, and remember, it's not that deep. <laughs>